my name is Christopher Paul Carey. I'm the Director of Publishing at Edgar Rice Burroughs Incorporated. Uh, we have Chris West, um, Christopher West Holmes, um, uh, visiting the offices here today, so we thought we would do a little impromptu interview. Chris's father uh, was uh, John Eric Holmes, who wrote the books we just put out, uh, Ma Ma Mahars of Pellustar and Red Axe of Pellucidar, uh, which uh, Chris wrote the forewords for each of those volumes and also did a frontispiece illustration. So welcome yeah. to welcome to Tarzana. Hi. Uh, so uh, happy to be here. <laughs> this is just a great, great place. And you guys are a great company. Uh, it's so great bringing these books out. Well, um, people have been waiting for Red Axe and Pellucidar to be available to them. And uh, I'm so thrilled that they, they are here yep. at last. It's been in the works since mm -hmm. since um, probably before I came on board at the company. So, mm -hmm. um, so I'm glad that we can move this forward. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your father's background with Edgar Rice Burroughs and how he came to write these books? Yeah, well, like a lot of us, it started in his childhood. Um, he grew up uh, in Hawaii in the 40s, and uh, he was uh, at a summer camp, and he, the summer camp had a collection of Burroughs books, and he read them all. And then uh, and he found out that uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs was going to be in Honolulu, and he wanted to to get his autograph, but he couldn't afford any uh, hardcover books. But luckily a neighbor had a copy of Tarzan and the Leopard Man. And so they arranged for uh, my dad to go to the, the hotel where Edgar Rice Burroughs was staying and Edgar Rice Burroughs wrote a lovely inscription. And uh, I think it made a huge impression on my father. And then uh, when I was a kid, m my brother and I would uh, get to be read to as children, and uh, the Pellucidar series was my favorite uh, because I love dinosaurs, and so I guess I uh, had Dad read them all to me, and eventually we ran out of Pellucidar novels, <laughs> and supposedly I complained that there should be another one, so I put the idea in his head uh, that perhaps he could write one himself. He'd already, already written, uh, in the 50s, he wrote a, a short story that was printed in in a magazine. Uh, a war story set on the moon. So mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he was sort of prepared to become a pulp writer. Mm -hmm. Although he did end up getting a real job as a medical school teacher, <laughs> which perhaps was all for the best. <laughs> well, he uses some of that uh, knowledge in, in these books, too. So. Yes. You're, yeah. Your first neurologist uh, hero. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I kind of like slipped up when I was introducing you. I started calling you Chris West because uh, that's the main character of the right. of the books. Um, uh, that, that is Red Axe. Um, so how did how did that uh, come about? I, he just like <clears throat> he likes to embarrass me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe he, uh, West was my grandmother's maiden name, so maybe he was uh, giving a little. Um, a little love to, to mom, whose uh, name was uh, Isabel West. So um, Christopher West, Holmes is his hero, and he does not resemble me at all <laughs> beyond my name. Yes. He's uh, over six feet tall and well-muscled and uh, a war veteran and uh, a surfer and a doctor. And uh, I'm a guy who draws monsters and... Uh, <laughs> teaches a little bit like most of my family very cool um why uh, why do you think he decided to um pitch a pellucidar book to erb inc like what like was that his favorite series or mm -hmm. i don't know that it was his favorite but um <clears throat> i think we when i um when i mentioned wanting another pellucidar book he he probably thought well is there more to tell here and i think like a lot of us he was very intrigued by the mahars and uh Perhaps uh, the idea that the Mahars would have scientists uh, also uh, appealed to him. So his uh, it probably uh, his favorite character in the book is probably Zed, the Mahar uh -huh. neurologist. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite is Mula, the Monkey Man. But um, uh, the idea of uh, Mahar scientists, I think, is a great one. Yeah, definitely. Uh -huh. I mean, that's one of the, I thought that was one of the most fascinating uh, parts of Mahars uh, of Pellucidar. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I had a, I had another question that I was going to dovetail off of that, <laughs> but I'm, I'm 
blanking on it right well, now. Well, a lot of a lot of so, authors have oh, picked up on Mahars. Oh, I was gonna I was gonna mention. Oh, go ahead. That's no, all right. No, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm just gonna jot a note down so. I can okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> In, including the author of uh, Tarzan and the Battle mm. for Pelucidar, and yourself. Right. right. And the fact that the Mahars communicate telepathically or through radio or through the fourth yeah. dimension. Yeah. Has, uh, has uh, inspired other writers. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say that um, in that scene where you have the, the two Mahar scientists, um, they're referred to um, um, with male names. He mm -hmm. comes up with male names for them. And a lot, there's been a, some people who've done reviews who've been like, oh, he obviously didn't realize that the Mahars <laughs> were an all -fem female race. But I just thought I'd give you the opportunity to, to <laughs> yes. defend, defend your yeah. father here. He so, did remember that detail, yeah. yes. He did know they were an all-female race, but he just uh, had the Christopher who narrates the tale not just assume they were male, and then he finds out in Red Axe of Pelucidar yeah. that his good friend Zed, the neurologist, is a is a woman, yeah. Mahar, as yeah. are all Mahars, <clears throat> yeah. because they have no need for males in their in their society. Yeah. They have that secret of creating life without having to have males around. Yeah. And, you know, that's a, a very writerly thing. I mean, it's actually good writing. He's talking about the point of view of the character. You know, you don't want to violate the point of view of the character. There'd be no way that he would have known that unless somebody told him, mm -hmm. you know. So it's actually good writing. So, But it does get revealed in the second book. Spoiler. <laughs> spoiler. <laughs> but uh, so you read uh, Battle for Police Star. What did you think since uh, there are some, some connections to, yeah. to your father's work in there? So, yeah, that Dr. was neat. Dr. Moritz and all. Yeah, yeah he, he brings in a minor character and makes him a more major character, which is always a fun thing to do with, yeah. a, with a series. Yeah. And uh, like, uh, like we talked about, he, uh, he goes further into the Mahar uh, psychology and science. Uh, yeah, no, I enjoyed it a lot. And I, I always like the idea of Nazis having uh, made their way to Pellucidar. I didn't, I thought that would be something that could definitely happen in a, in yeah. a fictional universe. Yeah. Um, we could, there's room for Nazis, there's room for anyone who had a seafaring capability to be in Pellucidar and be stuck there forever and not aging. Yeah. So yeah. there could be Vikings, <laughs> there could be Nazis, there could be Amelia Earhart, there could be you know, all sorts of people down there. <clears throat> Yeah, so for, for people who haven't read the Pellucidar books, and you should go read them, um, <laughs> there's a polar opening. So that's that's what, what Chris is talking about, that people, if they came in through the polar opening, um, they could have inhabited Pellucidar and been there for ages. <laughs> so, and, I, and ERB had that with the, Cors the Corsars, which were basically Corsairs, right. um, pirates who came, came through the polar opening. Yes, so. pirates. So we have these great new editions here. Um, encourage you to check them out uh, at edgariceburrows.com. Um, and uh, so that's, that's pretty much it here. So you got a new monster to look forward to too. Yeah. With the, in Red X and a new race of Polynesians um, who inhabit Blue Star as well. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. It's a, a great expansion. I mean, he, very faithful to the originals, and that's why we decided to put it in the Edgar Rice Burroughs Universe series, which is the expanded canon, basically, uh, you know, very faithful to, to ERB. So it's a, an honor to to have, you know, to put these books out, and honor to have you here with us today. So thanks a lot, Great Chris. to be here. <laughs> so, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>